Hey my friends, thank you for clicking on this video. It means a lot because this one's a very special video to me. Um, recently for Father's Day, my wife and daughter took me out to the Academy Museum of Motion Pictures. And as a film lover and living out here in Los Angeles and being a member of SAG and all that good stuff, uh, I'm just a huge movie buff and there could not have been a better Father's Day gift than to take me out to the Academy Museum and immerse myself in all things film. So um, yeah, it's we shot a lot of footage, so it's taken me a while to get it all together, but it's finally done and I'm excited to share it with you guys here today. So I hope you enjoy it. Sit back and relax and enjoy this fantastic tour of the Academy Museum of Motion Pictures. <laughs> Yep, there it is up ahead uh, as we're walking down Wilshire. Oh, there's there's the exit to the museum. You can't go in that way. You gotta keep going around the corner and enter that way. There we go, hanging out with the little Oscar. Getting this thing started off just right. Uh, now I just wanna say, as I first got here, uh, my old buddy Mark Altman, who I love and adore, he has these great podcasts called The 430 Movie and Angoria's Trexperts. I listen to them all the time. And he was in a line right in front of me, so. I, I noticed him, so I said hi to him. So if you guys want to hear some great podcasts, please go and check out um, Mark's podcast. They are so amazing. I'll leave the links down below. All right, let's keep this tour going. Let's go. As I take you through this experience, I'm going to read off some of the things that are up on the wall. For example, the stories of cinema is what this is all about. It's a five floor exhibition that presents the diverse international and complex stories of movie makers, the works they create, and the impact their art has on the world. It explores narrative and documentary films, both animated and live action, as well as the arts and sciences of movie making. While celebratory, the exhibition also seeks to contextualize and challenge dominant narratives around cinema. And in this first section, we have an immersive installation that travels from the very beginning of film to the groundbreaking movies of present day. It's an experience that juxtaposes a breadth of genres, subgenres, national cinemas, and movements through film stills and sequences that trace multiple paths of cinematic history. As the sound moves from one screen to the next, it invites unexpected connections and underscores the idea of a global creative dialogue among filmmakers. Aww. Having fun? Yeah. <laughs> the relevatory moments that are in this 13 minute multi-channel presentation are preludes to the cinematic experience that continues upstairs. So let's head upstairs. When we come to this first section on the second floor, it's a really beautiful display about gender equalities, Black Lives Matter, and social justice. And for example, I'll read off this plaque here. It says that um, movies have the power to shape public awareness. Socially conscious films can spotlight inequities, ignite important conversations, and amplify the voices of marginalized people and communities. This gallery that I'm showing you here, it weaves together film stills and excerpts, posters, archival photographs, and more to highlight filmmaking as a conduit for cultural change. This next section here shows off a lot of uh, wardrobe and makeup effects. There's a head bust for Don Cheadle. This is a King Kong mask that was designed and worn by its artist and creator, Rick Baker, for the 1976 version of King Kong. Here's a bust of Charlize Theron's head that was used to help design the wigs and the makeup effects for the film Bombshell. And here's two versions of the prosthetic arm that she wore for the film Mad Max Fury Road. And for the film Dolomite, there were dozens of different hair pieces, wigs, mustaches, sideburns, all kinds of things, of, uh, and of course the wardrobe here, to really sell the, uh, the period that they were going for in the film Dolomite. Just look at these things, man, they're incredible. And Eddie was so good in this movie. Now here's some more wardrobe pieces. The yellow dress, of course, is Emma Stone from La La Land. This mermaid dress worn by Scarlett Johansson in Hail Caesar. There's the dude's wardrobe from The Big Lebowski. These are cool stuff. Now let me show you a close-up. 
Here is that mermaid dress that Scarlett Johansson wore. It is absolutely stunning up close. Look at the detail in this thing. All the scales, the color, the shimmer. It's just fantastic. Right down to the tail. Now you cannot have a wardrobe section and not have something to do with Elton John. Like this amazing winged devil costume as seen in the film Rocket Man. Here's another exquisite piece from the movie The Wiz. Unbelievable detail. And here's stuff from Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. This is uh, the outfit worn by Brad Pitt. Check it out. Now what I do love is that a lot of these displays, they'll also have videos at the bottom that show you scenes from the film that the wardrobe is from, really tying it all together. Here's the May Queen dress from the film Midsommar. Very stunning. They have some real vintage pieces on display as well, like this costume worn by Marlon Brando in the film Mutiny on the Bounty. Now before we head out to the next section, here's the last little portion of costumes, like this one from Us. And this, of course, is from Gladiator. This is the costume worn by Russell Crowe as Maximus. This final stunning piece is a dress that was worn by Ji Zhang in the film Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. This next section is dedicated to the film classic, The Wizard of Oz. Of course, we have some posters, a picture here from the premiere, another poster for the film. Just so much great stuff. Check out this center floor display. You've got the ruby slippers right there in the center and a fantastic display of the yellow brick road right behind it. Now in the Wizard of Oz exhibit, here's the uh, yellow brick road with the ruby slippers right there. Let's look around here, see what else we got. We got some posters on the wall. I got the camera that was used right over here. Uh, this thing is a beast of a camera. Let's give you a look at the uh, front of this thing. This is the Technicolor three strip camera uh, that was used by director Victor Fleming for The Wizard of Oz. Look at this thing. Of course, here's a shot of the actual dolly that they used. Very cool. Here's a shot of one of the matte paintings used in the haunted forest where the actors would be in that blank area and the trees would be right there. Here's a massive, massive wall size photograph of the set where the yellow brick road was. It's massive, it is so cool. And there's old Dorothy and the dog Toto and the good witch of the North, Glinda. Occasionally see these enormous screens on the wall showing all kinds of cool clips, or in this case, the movie. And here's some early shots uh, of the characters in costume. And speaking of costumes, here's two versions of Dorothy's. This is the one here that uh, Judy Garland wore in the film. And the one on the right was worn by her stand-in and also Judy herself in some earlier test footage. Some more costumes include this really cool munchkin attire for one of the special munchkins. And this headpiece for the lion. It's very cool. Look how long this thing is. So regal. And here's some test shots for the witch done on this particular actress here, but nothing beats this one here, the actual final version on Margaret Hamilton. She was absolutely perfect. And I didn't realize this, but it took over six different directors to actually shoot the entire film of Wizard of Oz, each in different stages. That's crazy. Just behind the Wizard of Oz exhibit, there's this little room that's all about sound and how they put all the sound to the film to make it sound so great, including effects and music. Here, check it out. I'll let you hear just a little bit. It will be up to the director and the sound team after filming takes place to ultimately construct a new soundtrack, one that employs well-recorded dialogue and vocals, sound effects of correct size, weight, and action, and music. This entire presentation runs about 15 minutes and it's absolutely amazing. The next section takes us to this amazing Spike Lee exhibit. Check out all this paraphernalia and signs and posters. Oh, check it out. And over here, there's a couple of his Academy Awards. There's two of them. Most recently, he won the award for uh, Adapted Screenplay for Black Klansman in 2018. And then this one here, which is an honorary Academy Award that he got in 2015. And then, of course, there's more stuff on display here. Some of the uh, wardrobe that you see here from Do the Right Thing. Some amazing instruments played by some legendary black artists. And over here on this wall, we have some more sports paraphernalia. 
And here's that little section of do the right thing with his jersey. And then this other piece of attire, posters, and the album in vinyl down here on the bottom. This is an absolutely fantastic display. I love this little tunnel here. It's got all these photos from his films. And uh, when you pop out the other side, that's where that Spike Lee sign is hanging. All right, let's, uh, let's keep moving. When you head out of the Spike Lee section, you come across this awesome section dedicated to the legendary Bruce Lee. This area is chock full of cool posters and memorabilia and monitors. You're just showcasing his amazing talent. Check this dude out. Man, he makes it look so easy. And check it out. Here's a pair of nunchucks, uh, similar to the ones that he whipped around like a boss in Enter the Dragon. Pretty sweet. And what's a more appropriate display behind a kung fu master than, than a film master, Orson Welles? Here's the sled from Citizen Kane. And Charles Foster Kane himself standing on a stack of his newspapers. A couple of posters over there. Look, he even put the camera in the floor to get an even better lower angle. I tell you about Rosebud. But I do love, in this area, is this great old-fashioned edit bay, guys. We all edit digitally, but this is what they cut on back in the day. It's an old flatbed editing system. Uh, it's very technical uh, when using these things. So much more difficult than what we get to do nowadays. So if you've ever had to cut on one of these, you know just how lucky we are in the digital age. What cooler way to wrap up this entire floor than to have an entire room just dedicated to the broadcast of the Academy Awards. As you see on this table here, there's a timeline that goes around the edge that starts from the very first one all the way to the most current with, of course, uh, all these monitors showing off a lot of the awards that have been presented over the years. This is a very cool room. So it's kind of neat walking around. I've been seeing a lot of these uh, different exhibits. I'm going to take a seat right here. Um, Lots of very, very cool exhibits here. This big room here is showing clips from the Academy Awards. You can probably stand in here all day and see different clips kick in. Uh, they got some uh, Academy Awards in the other room. We'll go take a quick peek at those, and then uh, I think we might be wrapping this up. Here in this back section, we have a huge collection of Academy Awards, and they're for everything. They're for Best Picture, Best Actress, and of course, one of my favorites, even Best Film Editing for Gigi from 1958. As we leave the second floor and head on up to the third floor, they got this amazing just visual wall. It's just so, so cool. Uh, so you can check out some great shots from films. Um, and the other cool thing about this entire thing is if you become a member of the Academy, well, you figure, well, why would you? Because then this would become boring. No, it turns out that they're always going to constantly uh, have this whole thing in constant rotation. So there'll be changes all the time. So if you're a member, it should stay relatively fresh and new. So you can come back over and over again. Okay, the first room we're in feels like a film noir room. So let's take a look. Ah, according to this sign that I found on the wall, this entire section here is dedicated to the filmmaker Pedro Almodovar. He's an Academy Award winning filmmaker who has made over 21 feature films to date and his first film dating as far back as 1980. Pedro created this immersive installation specifically for the Academy Museum and each of the 12 channels here offers a poetic distillation of crucial themes and iconic scenes from his body of work and lots of other things that have inspired his talent. Over in this room, it is all about the celebration and invention of characters. And in this particular room, animation characters. For example, stop motion, here's some drawings from Tim Burton's films Nightmare Before Christmas and Frank and Weenie. And over on this table, we got some nice stills here uh, from the Bugs Bunny cartoon, What's Cooking Doc? Love that. And it looks like no matter where you turn, there's always a video playing somewhere. If you make a wish on the evening star, it's sure to come true. <laughs> Well, you wish on that star, sweetheart. Yeah. Walt Disney had asked animator Frank Thomas to collaborate with architect Kim Weber to design the Ideal Animator's desk. And together they came up with this, which has ideal height, angles, features, shelves, drawers, all that good stuff. And eventually this became a staple at the Disney Studios for animators. Frank Thomas was best known for adding personality and emotion into his characters, just like these characters here from Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. 
He also worked on Bambi, Sleeping Beauty, and did a great job with villains such as Captain Hook and Peter Pan. In this great little center area display, we have a lot of 3D mock-ups of uh, many of our favorite characters. Of course, that was Buzz Lightyear, and here's Elsa, that's the back, here's the front. Such exquisite detail on everything. <laughs> Down there you got a little Anna and Olaf. Look at the face on this dude, it's so good. Here's a, an excellent Shrek. Tell a little bit of differences there. And here's a bunch of mouthpieces for things like the Wallace and Gromit cartoons. So when they have to talk and express, it's all done by pulling off one mouthpiece and putting on another. There they are, Wallace and Gromit. <laughs> Those are so cool. Of course, these are from Up, as we remember. Two different versions. <laughs> and here are some 3D mock-ups of the original dwarves from Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. This is an animatronic reference model that was used to show movements of deer's limbs to help the Bambi animators. And you can't have an animation section without showing off some Tim Burton gold. Here's old Frank and Weenie. Look at that. <laughs> and of course, the original Bugs Bunny. And uh, very similar to the face pieces from Wallace and Gromit, these are some of the head pieces from Nightmare Before Christmas, where they would just pop on and pop off the heads in order to get the character to speak. What we see here are the animatronic figures for Wes Anderson's Fantastic Mr. Fox. Before their final forms appear on screen, computer animated characters like these ones from Toy Story start off looking very differently before reaching their final appearance. Like this shot of Buzz Lightyear. As fun as animation is, sometimes we are reminded of just how far we've come. For example, they have this display right here about uh, how animation lends itself to be extremely grotesque in its racism and sexism. Filled with visualizations of race and gender-based stereotypes, whitewashed voice casting, and unrealistic body standards. There was also unrealistic depictions of violence, such as dynamite that would explode and have no lasting consequences. So depictions of violence against minorities and women would just follow the cultural norms of a specific era and would just later be suppressed by the studios who produced them. Okay, we are now leaving the animation section and what better way to wrap it up than uh, with a kiss to bugs and a th -th 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 that's all, folks. All right, now let's move on. This next section is totally my jam, special effects. Willis O'Brien is a pioneer in stop-motion animation, having worked on movies like King Kong and, of course, Mighty Joe Young. Just look at this animation, man. It is so good. Willis was a technical director on this movie, Mighty Joe Young, and one of its animators was another legend in this field, and that's Ray Harryhausen, who would go on to do legendary work in these Sinbad movies, Jason and the Argonauts, Clash of the Titans, and Gulliver's Travels. Now we flash forward to modern times with these pieces from James Cameron's movies. As you can see here are some models like the pseudopod from the abyss, the headpiece used in Avatar, and some figures that show the transitions of the T-1000 from Terminator 2. And down below we have a maquette of a T-Rex used in the Jurassic Park films. They also had some televisions displaying how James Cameron's new state-of-the-art technology can really immerse the actors into their worlds to help create these new characters in the digital age. All right, science fiction anyone? Look at this room. This is my favorite room, absolutely. Look at this, R2-D2, absolutely beautiful. Oh, look at this guy. Man, this place is fantastic. The detail on R2 is exquisite. This is the real deal, y'all. Now there he is, the one and only R2-D2 on full display here. In the, in the center section of this exhibit. Now, don't forget his buddy, C-3PO, he's here. Seeing both of these droids up close and personal really brings back those memories from my childhood. And here's the costume worn by Denai Gurira as Okoye in Black Panther. Absolutely stunning up close. And here is the skull of an alien. Man, the detail on this is so amazing. Look at this, both sides, man. Work of art, y'all. Oh yeah, here we go. Here is the animatronic E.T. from the film, E.T. the Extraterrestrial. I just love this movie and seeing this thing up close just takes me back to my childhood. I just love it. Hey, <laughs> what's going on, E.T.? 
Take me home. And for those fans of 2001 A Space Odyssey, here's one of the space suits worn by one of the actors. And here's the Ares 1B spaceship model from the same film. Located just behind this model is this uh, screening room. And of course, what caught my attention, but some sound effects from Star Trek. So I'm just gonna let you guys check out some of the imagery that they're playing in this theater room. Man, sci-fi is such my jam. When I come back, I would definitely sit in here and watch the whole thing. And look, nothing says sci-fi like a futuristic ATM from Blade Runner. <laughs> kind of an odd prop to have, but there it is. Now this is something to see on display. Look at this outstanding prosthetic suit worn by Doug Jones as the amphibian man in the shape of water, which won the Academy Award for Best Picture that year. I mean, look at this thing. Doug Jones is this really tall but very expressive person and he's perfect in roles like this. I'm so glad this was a suit and not CGI. Speaking of great looking suits, here we have Edward Scissorhands, Tim Burton's film starring Johnny Depp. Here's the suit, the hands, the works. This is so amazing. Look at these things up close. So cool. And here is the gold costume worn by Gary Oldman and Bram Stoker's Dracula, directed by Francis Ford Coppola. I also love that they have on display not just a bunch of costumes, but some miniatures like this one here. This is the Cobble Pot Manor that was used in Batman Returns, also directed by Tim Burton. Just love the detail on these miniatures. I miss them. Everything is replaced with CGI now. And speaking of CGI, as the sort of the go-to to solve all the effects problems on every movie. Before that, we had these beautiful things like these matte paintings, also from Batman Returns. Look at the detail on this thing, man. Just a thing of beauty. I am also a huge fan of prosthetic makeup, which is one of the things I love about Lord of the Rings. Look at this ogre. And here's the animatronic head of the T-800, of course, played by Arnold Schwarzenegger in Terminator 2 Judgment Day. This thing has seen better days. Arnie, you're looking a little rough, dude. And finally, the last things on display are these really incredible animatronic puppet designs for the film The Dark Crystal that was directed by Jim Henson. The face work and... Uh, the expressions on these things are really dynamic. If you haven't seen this film, it's a very bizarre film, but it's got lots of heart and imagination. As we leave that main room, there's one more thing on this floor, and that is this, the Oscar experience that my girls bought for me for Father's Day. So here, I'm just going to let you uh, check it out. Hey guys, check it out over here. Look, it's a full-size Lego Academy Award, man. Is that cool or what? It's yeah, cool. It's not as cool as the one I just won. Here, let's roll the footage. I'd like to thank my wife and daughter. Without their support, this could not have been possible. Thank you so much, everyone. This is a dream come true. Okay, now the sign said there's a Netflix lounge. Here it is, the Netflix lounge. I don't even see a Netflix logo, Netflix poster. Although the chairs are the color of Netflix logo, so score. Hey, they're running away and they dropped my paddle. Come back here. Don't you run away from me, I have my paddle. Come back here. Okay, so we just finished floor number three. That was awesome, that was just so amazing. Starting with the animation stuff and then turning into sort of the uh, exhibit of costumes and uh, movies and, and stuff like that. It's very, very cool, loved it. My girls have already uh, petered out on me. They're already downstairs at the cafe. <laughs> Getting something probably tasty and good. 
Yeah, it's very cool. So we're gonna head over to the cafe, find the girls. Yeah, they're in here, probably got them a nice little refreshment. Of course, we got a bunch of Hollywood photos up here on the wall. That's what you do at the Hollywood Cafe. Aha, I found my daughter. Now, let's head outside and take a little break. Ah, funny time to take a little break, enjoy a little drink, and uh, talk about the Oscars. What's your favorite part? Um, animation. The animation, animation was really cool. They had uh, um, animation and songs that were really good. Yeah, 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 that was a good section. That was a good section. I probably have to uh, say that uh, getting my Oscar uh, was my favorite because that was very cool. Those are very heavy, by the way. They're like eight and a half pounds. A lot of stuff here, man. It's it's overwhelming. It's like going yeah. to a convention. Yeah. <laughs> it's like there's almost too much to do uh, before you get tired. But we have uh, you know one more little section left and uh, call it a day. These are the Pillars and Bridge on the fifth floor. It's the Academy Museum name in honor of the extraordinary women who achieved significant firsts in history. So, of course, here you go. There's Heidi McDaniel. She was the first African-American to win an Academy Award. And here's all the other. There's Rita Moreno, one of the few EGOT winners right there. Sophia Loren, Buffy Saint, and Barbara Streisand. So, and over here, that's the dome we're headed to, y'all. So we're gonna check out the dome over there. They give us these paddles too, because it's really hot here. So pretty smart, keep yourself a fan. Um, but yeah, we're gonna go to this amazing dome. You, they, they show this dome in the Academy Awards. Um, yeah, let's check it out. Yeah, it's pretty cool. So it's a, it's a great looking uh, structure up ahead. So we're gonna go check it out here. Let's take a look this way. So yeah, this is the view from up here. And yeah. There we go. Look at this amazing dome. Woo! This is where they performed one of the uh, musical segments at the Oscars last year. This is really just a really nice area to come hang out. There's a pretty nice view up ahead. Let's check it out. Look at that view. There you go. This is a great view from the top of this amazing structure. There's a. <laughs> The surroundings aren't that complimentary. 99 cent store, <laughs> you know, but. Yeah, let's go still. and see if there's any discount Blu-rays. Discount Blu-rays, like my wife knows me. Let's go, y'all, I bet. You know, I know she's kind of joking, but I'm serious. If we get down to that 99 cent store, I bet you there's some movies in there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what you gonna do, y'all? All right, let's, uh, let's keep going. Just one more time, here's a great view of this awesome structure. Just an absolutely great place to hang out. This is called the Dolby Family Terrace. You can tell it's just uh, decked out to hang out. I think I saw Bruce the Shark from Jaws. So uh, we're gonna go down and check out the shark. Oh yeah, there's the shark, y'all. All right, here we go. So the lady just told me this is the actual Bruce the Shark from Jaws. <laughs> Look at that thing, man. It's amazing. How about that shark, girls? Yeah. <laughs> Come on, bro. How about that shark? Yeah. Oh, I tell you, good help so hard to find. Guys, that is it. Here we are. This is it. This big, beautiful place. The, uh, the Academy it has absolutely been fabulous. You see right here behind me, cinema is all about cinema. I absolutely love the cinema. I love the theater. I love movies. And this has been a tremendous experience, and I couldn't be any happier to have celebrated Father's Day this way with my family, my wife and daughter, coming out and experiencing the movies, bumping into Mark Altman, who also loves movies. I mean, how great is that? So uh, that is going to do it, guys. Thank you so much for checking out this video. If you enjoyed it, please do me the honor of hitting like and subscribe down there. I would greatly appreciate it. Sorry for the mask, but it is a rule in this building, and I'm going to adhere to it until I walk out of this door. So uh, thank you so much for checking it out. Until next time, go watch some movies.